Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another episode of Friendly Friday, a weekly series where we take a look at budget, standard or modern decks, and this week we're taking a look at Ascent Aggro in standard, a mono-white aggro deck that's looking to gain the city's blessing with a number of Ascent cards. Take a look at this Snaphorn Sentry for example, a 1 mana 03 with Ascent, which means that if at any point that the Snaphorn Sentry is in play, if we have 10 or more permanents in play, then we gain a city's blessing for the rest of the game. So even if the Snaphorn Sentry dies, we still have the city's blessing for the rest of the game, even if we should go below 10 permanents at any point. And in the case of Snaphorn Sentry, if we have the city's blessing, he gets plus 3 plus 0, making him into a 1 mana 3 3, which is quite powerful. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck, starting out with her 1 drops, where we have 2 copies of Cartouche of Solidarity, 1 mana for an enchantment aura that goes onto one of our creatures and gives the enchanted creature plus 1 plus 1 on first strike, and when the Cartouche enters the battlefield we also get to make a 1-1 one, one soldier creature token with Vigilance, so that's 2 permanents that count towards the city's blessing for just 1 mana. Next up we have 4 copies of Legion's Landing, a 1 mana legendary enchantment that when it enters the battlefield we get to make a 1-1 one, one vampire creature token with lifelink, and if we attack with 3 or more creatures at any point we get to transform Legion's Landing into Adanto the first fort, which can make additional vampire tokens. And so the nice thing about Legion's Landing, like with the Cartouche of Solidarity, is that we get 2 permanents that count towards the City's Blessing for just 1 mana, so that's gonna give us the City's Blessing very quickly. And speaking of the City's Blessing, we have 4 copies of Sky Marcher Aspirant, a 1 mana 2-1 with the Sand, and when we have the City's Blessing, the Aspirant gains Flying, so nice evasive ability on an already pretty powerful 1-drop. Then we have the 4 copies of Snowport Sentry, 1 mana 3-3 three, three with the City's Blessing, Next up we have 4 copies of Adanto Vanguard, a 2 mana 1-1 one, one that gets plus 2 plus 0 as long as it's attacking, so a 3-1 when it's attacking, and we can pay for life at any point to give Adanto Vanguard indestructible until end of turn, so that's gonna save him from most removal spells in the format, and that's also very helpful to just keep as many permanents in play for the city's blessing. Then we have our final Ascent card in the deck, 3 copies of Pride of Conquerors, a 2 mana instant that gives our creatures plus 1 plus 1, but if we have the city's blessing it gives our creatures plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn. So very powerful effect for just 2 mana if we have the city's blessing. And as you'll see, the rest of the deck includes lots of token generation, so that's gonna make this plus 2 plus 2 effect even more powerful. Then we have 4 copies of Servo Exhibition, 2 mana to make 2 1-1 one, one Servo Creature Tokens, so yet again a card that makes multiple permanents for the City's Blessing, and making those tokens is also nice when we're trying to go wide with Pride of Conquerors or Shafat Dunes, or even a Banalish Marshal as we'll see in a second. Next up we have 4 copies of Hisra Banalia, which makes up most of the cost of the deck, but it is super powerful by itself and also very synergistic with Ascent and the City's Blessing, since for 3 mana we can get up to 3 permanents, if you count the enchantments and the 2 knight tokens we get. So when we play Hisra Banalia we get to make a 2-2 knight token with Vigilance, on our second turn after our draw step we get to make a second knight token, and on the third chapter our knights get plus 2 plus 1 until end of turn, and we have to sacrifice the enchantment, so that's 3 permanents, towards the City's Blessing, which is very powerful, and of course we have some other knights in the deck as well that might get the bonus besides the 2-2 knight tokens we get from the history. And speaking of knights, we have 4 copies of Banalish Marshal, 3 mana for a 3-3 creature that gives other creatures we control plus 1 plus 1, and it is a human knight, so also gets pumped by the History of Banalia trigger. And of course, with all our token generation that's going on in the deck, giving our creatures plus 1 plus 1 is a very powerful effect as well. And last but not least, we have 4 copies of Asram's Expertise, 4 mana to make 3 1-1 one, one servo tokens, and we also get to cast a card with convert mana cost 3 or less from our hand without paying its mana cost, which also works out very well in this deck, since we might be able to put a Banalish Marshal into play for free, or just play a Pride of Conquerors, which the 3 tokens will be in play already, so they will count towards the Ascent for the Pride of Conquerors, so we can just kind of give all our creatures plus 2 plus 2 out of nowhere, even if we weren't close to the city's blessing beforehand. So there's lots of neat things we can do with a Sram's expertise, besides just making a bunch of tokens that uh, synergize well with the rest of the deck. And then our mana base is pretty straightforward, 19 basic planes, and then 4 copies of Shafat Dunes, which also works out very nicely in our deck, since we can sacrifice it to give our creatures plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn, which is another nice anthem effect when we're going wide with a bunch of tokens. And just as a small side note, we are of course hoping our opponent doesn't have a Goblin Chain Warlord, since that card can be pretty devastating if we don't have a Banalish Marshal in play. 
than going over the sideboard. I should mention that we're typically not going to sideboard a whole lot in this deck since the main deck is pretty streamlined and the sideboard cards don't offer a ton of extra value but uh, there's just a bunch of cards that could still be useful in some situations. We have two copies of Authority of the Consuls, which we might consider bringing in against the aggressive red decks, where they have a bunch of haste creatures that now will come into play tapped. So that helps in a racing scenario. We have two copies of Baffling Ant as a cheap removal spell that we might also bring in against opposing aggressive decks. Three copies of Knight of Grace, which might be an upgrade if we're up against a deck with a lot of black removal spells. We have two copies of Solemnity, which can be pretty effective against the uh, Constrictor deck with Walking Ballista and Friends, making them not gain any energy and not get any plus one plus one counters is pretty useful there. Then we have two copies of Thopter Arrest as an additional versatile removal spell that can also deal with artifacts, two Ixalan's Binding as another pretty versatile removal spell. And then we have two copies of Gideon's Intervention, which we can bring in to shut down a card from the opponent's deck proactively. So we could, for example, name Fumigate or Settle the Wreckage to prevent them from uh, dealing with our tokens. But even there, it's pretty narrow, so I'm not sure if we would bring it in in those uh, scenarios. But it's in the sideboard just in case. So that's the deck. So now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play. And the sand looks okay. Some tokens to quickly get to the city's blessing. And then hopefully we can draw into some more of our powerful cars like Banalish Marshal, like History of Banalia, maybe a Pride of uh, Conquerors at some point. Opponent leads with Islands. We'll play a Servo Exhibition. And next turn we will already have the City's Blessing, as we see our opponent cast a strategic planning, putting two angels in the graveyard, so up against what looks like blue-white God Pharaoh's Gift combo. And wow, we found a Banalish Marshal, which is great here. So opponent can play Fumigates in their deck, but we're just going to try and be faster than the Fumigate. And Cartouche is going to make a token, and that's going to give us 10 permanence for the Snowborn Sentry. On turn 3, which is pretty impressive. Get in there with everyone. And next turn we could already be dealing quite a chunk of damage with this Banalish Marshal coming up. And Shard of course. Yep, if our opponent can't put anything in play or interact with us, they will be dead to this Marshal. So let's turn them out there. Attack. And that's a turn 4 kill, if I did the math right. And yep, that does it. Alright, on to sideboarding against blue-white Godfather's Gift. So, Thopter Arrest might be necessary to get their gift, but it is kind of too late in a way since they already get a trigger out of it. Could bring in Gideon's Intervention named Fumigate. That's definitely reasonable since that's the way we can lose. And it could also name Refurbish or Godfather's Gift potentially. And what do we take out? Maybe a Sram's Expertise since it is weak to Fumigate and might be a bit slow on the draw. So the other card we're considering is Thopter Arrest, which certainly has some merit, but I think we just have to try and be faster and get underneath the Refurbish or Godfather's Gift. But it's definitely going to be tricky, but we'll try. We have two shots at it. And yeah, this hand looks pretty good. Of course, weak to Fumigate, but Turn 1 landing, turn 2 exhibition, turn 3 marshal. I'm not gonna turn down. Turn 2 charter course. Let's see if they already can discard a Godfather's gift. They cannot. A Sunscorch champion though is gonna buy them some time. Let's play exhibition. And next turn we could already flip the landing. And a Champion of Wits, that's fine. So we do still get a pretty nice attack here, thanks to our Banalish Marshal, and even without Banalish Marshal, it would be fine attacking into the Champion of Wits with our tokens. And we'll get to flip the landing, which gives us a little bit of staying power. Put on discards a refurbish, so it probably means they already have one in hand, but they didn't find their Godfather's Gift yet, which is good for us. Flooding out a little bit, but at least some of our lands are Shafet Dunes. So a nice curve out on our part. 
flip landing and opponent's probably gonna trade for the vampire here and take four. There's an ether hub. And our opponent gets back Sunscorched Champion and gains four, back up to 19. So we're kind of in a rough spot here as we keep drawing fat units. As in, we're not winning on the board necessarily since we can't really attack into the Sunscorched Champion. But if we play Expertise, then we get kind of destroyed by a Fumigate from the opponent, which they could definitely have. But yeah, as I've said, I don't think we can afford not to play the Expertise since we're not really getting anywhere on the board. And if we give the opponent more time, they start Eternalizing Champion of Wits and we're definitely not going to win the late game then. So I think we just have to ask the opponent a question, which is, do you have Fumigate? If not, then we might be able to start attacking. If they do have it, then... It's probably game over. So this is where the Gideon's Intervention, even though it is pretty reactive, would still be quite okay, letting us preemptively shut down Fumigate, but it looks like our opponent does not have double white mana since they use their energy from the Ether Hub, so Fumigate might not be a concern yet. So also don't need to play around Settle the Wreckage, so don't mind using Shafat Dunes here and get in a sizable attack with our Servo Tokens. And I don't think we want to attack with the Marshal quite yet. So that's 15 damage, but our opponent can prevent 3 of it. And then... I think we do run out to Aspirant, try and close out the game next turn. And once again hope they don't have uh, Fumigate or White Mana, if they already have the Fumigate. And our opponent scoops it up. Alright, so we managed to beat Blue White God for his gift in two quick games onto the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And this hand's not amazing by any stretch, but I think it's still keepable. A Dent of Vanguard is one of our few cards that doesn't really synergize super well with uh, City's Blessing. And the City's Blessing is usually how we have those explosive starts. Sentry turn late, but that's fine. You can still play it and the Vanguard next turn. Up against what might be a Constrictor deck. Alright, Aspirin's not bad. So let's attack and then play another Vanguard plus the Aspirant instead of the Snowborn Sentry. Alright, line number three. And Thrashing Brontal on the play. Alright, so did not find land number 4 for Sram's expertise. So yeah, we could push through 3 damage with the Vanguard by taking 4. It's probably fine still, since we're kind of the aggro deck in this spot. Don't want to attack with the Aspirant quite yet, since we don't have the City's Blessing. So I'll make this one indestructible. Trade kind of down on uh, damage in a way, but... Since we're the aggressors, we can uh, afford to play history, say go. And our opponent kind of has to kill the history before we draw, so they won't get to block and sack. Otherwise we get an additional knight token, but they might just keep their two brontodons around. Get another token, so now we should be getting the city's blessing here, can play serve exhibition into Snowboard Sentry, and now our Aspirant has Flying. And we can attack for two. Won't be attacking with the Vanguard, since our opponent can block both. But next turn we might go wide, and attack with everyone, we'll see. Best card we can draw in this spot is a Banalish Marshal, or a Pride of Conquerors, Lanor Elves, into Rishkar, all right, Pun putting up some nice ground blockers. So going wide could be tricky if we don't find one of the aforementioned cards, but the Sky Marcher Aspirant can keep pinging in there for two. And as long as our opponent doesn't play a Walking Ballista, we should still be fine. All right, Legion's Landing. So actually don't mind playing Legion's Landing and attacking with uh, the Knights and the Aspirant here, since the Knights still have a good attack. 
do we want to attack with anything else? So I'll, I'll play it safe and just attack with these and still get to transform our Allegiance Landing. And it also gives us four mana for next turn to uh, play a Strom's Expertise and go wide. So your opponent will just trade off their Rishkar. That's fine. We'll say go. And then next turn, attacking with everyone might be enough. All right, and this is a vital force. Doesn't do a ton for the opponent. Just makes a land into a 5-5. Five five. All right, Pride of Conquerors is perfect here, so now we can just attack with everyone, and that should do it. I suppose we could have cast Sram's Expertise into Pride of Conquerors in case uh, this somehow doesn't deal lethal, but I'm sure that this will be enough. And if it doesn't kill the opponent, I guess it leaves them with nothing in play, which is also fine. And yeah, opponent just scoops it up. All right, on to game two against the black green. Did not see a ton of Winding Constrictors or uh, Energy cards, so maybe we don't actually need the Solemnity, but I imagine our opponent has Winding Constrictor in their deck. So I'm going to bring it in just in case. Maybe just got two Strom's Expertises. Kind of keep the curve low. And yeah, sure, we could bring in some Baffling Ends or some Thopter Arrests as well, but that's going to dilute our deck. So I think we just want to stay as focused as possible and just bring in the Solemnities, which could be very effective against the opponent's deck. Alright, so we're on the draw. This hand's a bit slow, lots of uh, expensive cards, but we are on the draw, so it's likely we find a third land by turn 3, and in that case this hand's keepable. Don't have a turn to play is the problem right now. But we do have some uh, good draws here, and yeah, there we see Etherhub. So that makes the Solemnity sideboard plan more effective. And there's a Walking Ballista I was afraid of, but I'll just attack here. Yeah, I should have played my land before attacking in case we wanted to play Pride of Conquerors, but I doubt we want to do that. Say go. Opponent's going to hold on to the Walking Ballista to try and get more value out of it. Second Ether Hub into Rishkar. All right, it makes sense why they didn't fire off the Ballista right away. And they're going to shoot down the Aspirant. We could have saved it with a Pride and traded it for the Walking Ballista, essentially, if they wanted to use it again, but I don't think that was worth it. We'll just let the Aspirant go. All right, pick up another land. So I think we want to run out the History. And next turn we get to go Expertise into Banalish Marshal. And our opponent's got a duress. All right, it's uh, probably going to take the expertise here. So that was a timely duress. And a thrashing brontodon, which I imagine they're going to sack right now. Yep. All right, it's not going to leave us with a ton of resources. But uh, the serve exhibition is okay. So let's run out the marshal. Attack for three. And now they know about the Pride of Conquerors, which makes it a bit less effective than it would be normally. So let's hope they don't have something like a Verger's Gearhulk here. Looks like they're just going to pump their Ballista end of turn. Nope, they're going to tap out for something. Six mana, is this a Vraska? Or another Walking Ballista. Alright, it's a Walking Ballista for three. Yeah, it's pretty good here as well. They're just going to shoot down the Banalish Marshal right now, not take any risks. And that works. Alright, so our hand uh, didn't quite develop the way we wanted it to. So we can play a Serve Exhibition. And we're still not close to the City's Blessing. Yeah, this Walking Ballista is kind of an issue. So I'll say go. So yeah, Solemnity, definitely a card we want here. And there's Carnage Tyrant, sure. 
If our hand goes the way we want it to, then Carnage Tyrant doesn't really matter. And there's Solemnity, a few turns late. Um, but I guess it's still worth playing here. So we have exactly 10 permanents, which means that our opponent can respond to the Pride of Conquerors by shooting down one of our tokens. And that will leave us with only 9 permanents, and so we won't get plus 2 plus 2. And there's Karn, Sign of Urza. And we'll give him an Aether Hub. Of course, our opponent does have Thrashing Brontodon to deal with Solemnity, so it's not like they're called to it. Yeah, I think we just take it. Snowboard Sentry. And now we could use the Shafet Dunes to get in an attack. Or we could use a Pride of Conquerors. I think we want to use Shafet Dunes. And attack our opponents. Opponent takes 5, down to 10. Aether Hub doesn't give them any energy. Karn makes a token. Carnage Tyrant gets in. So, not sure what we can top deck to get out of this mess. Banalish Marshal is okay, I guess. Maybe shouldn't have attacked with our Servo last turn. But now, attack with everyone. And our opponent needs to make some blocks, otherwise they're dead. So, Walking Ballista is gonna chump. Opponent right now would be taking 9 damage if we use Pride of Conquerors. So, I'm not sure that we wanna fire it off quite yet. Since then we risk dying on the way back. So I think we just have to let damage happen here. Opponent's gonna take 5 down to 5. And we can use Pride of Conquerors defensively as well to block the Carnage Tyrant. I imagine Karn's gonna make an additional creature. So yeah, the turn where we attacked with the two servo tokens into Rishkar. That might have been bad. And this is pretty bad for us as well. I'll give him a Siphoner. If our opponent attacks with Carnage Tyrant we can double block and Pride of Conquerors. And then try to sneak in a win next turn if we top deck something. But it's going to be difficult. Alright, double glint sleeve. So we're forced to block here. And our opponent decided to kill our knight token instead of the banalish marshal, which is interesting. Alright, and we drew another Shafet Dune, so we can use Shafet Dunes. Attack with everyone, but our opponent can just take the damage from the Marshal or the Servo. Block the Snowborn Sentry, block the other creature, and then we're uh, taking a lethal on the way back. So that's not a winning strategy, but we can hope our opponent makes a mistake, I guess. Since uh, playing defense is not going to work out against uh, Glint Sleeves drawing the opponent an extra card and the uh, active Karn getting back Fatal Push, so have to attack now and hope for the best. So, yep, yeah, opponent's uh, going to block like that, fall to two, and we'll say go. And they can just make another Construct token and kill us. They're gonna duress, see that we have a Shafet Dunes. Who knows, maybe they don't see the line. Alright, they see the line. Alright, so on to a game 3 against Black Green. Opponent had a nice disruptive start with the Ballista and the duress. So let's see if we can do any better in game 3. So, could consider Knight of Grace, it dodges Fatal Push, but that's about it. Could consider Baffling and Orthopter Rest. Don't think we want to go as far as Excellence Binding, especially when we see their opponent brought in the rest. So maybe we want to cut the Expertises for more cheap interaction, like Baffling End. Just so that if your opponent does play the rest later in the game, it's going to be a dead card. Could maybe cut a Pride for an extra creature or interactive spell, since now we're less on the token plan than before. And it's also a card that gets snagged by a late duress. So I guess I'll bring in a Thopter Rest instead of it and try this. Would like to be on the play. And the sand looks great. Missing a powerful turn 2 play, but turn on Aspirant can get in for some damage and then double Marshal. 
We're also not vulnerable to duress, so if your opponent plays duress, it's uh, not going to do anything. Opponent says go, we'll attack for two. They might have a fatal push here. Alright, they don't. Let's go a double snub horn. And hope our opponent casts a duress next turn, I guess. Nope, instead it's the Servant of the Conduit. Let's play Banalish Marshal, tank with everyone. Don't mind trading our 1-drop for their 2-drop. Instead they're just gonna prevent 1 damage, fall to 14. And cast down on the Banalish Marshal, alright. Works out better than a Fatal Push would have here. So that sets us back on a permanent as well for the City's Blessing, so that was a a pretty good play there. Into Sorcerer Spyglass. Okay. What's that supposed to name? Shafat Dunes. Alright, opponent names Aldanto the first fort. That's fine by me. Let's run out Banalish Marshal. And attack. So next turn if we draw another permanent. Then we'll have the City's Blessing, which is going to be pretty huge. Instead, oof, a Ravenous Chupacabra. Yep, yeah, that's about the best card they could have in the spot. And that's going to put a halt to our aggression. And Baffling End can't even remove it. Alright, there's a Legion's Landing, but our opponent named Aldanto already. So that's shut off. But I guess, let's see, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, we'll still get the City's Blessing, actually, so still works out okay. And we get to flip the Legion's Landing into a land, might as well. Even if we don't get to activate it. Opponent's down to one, so that uh, turned around pretty quickly. Don't think our opponent's got any sweepers in their deck. And yep, that does it, so managed to beat Black Green onto the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. And this hand's a bit on the slow side, as we only have the Aspirin to play early. But it is powerful if we can find some extra lands, play Expertise on 4, put a Marshal into play, so... I think I'll keep. Turn 1 Mountain. Let's run out the Aspirants. Alright, Legion's Landing was a nice draw, although it does make us pretty vulnerable to a Chain Warler here. So we might be better off uh, keeping up Pride of the Conquerors here instead. Although that would throw off our curve quite a bit. So we might just have to hope our opponent doesn't have it here. So I'll definitely attack first, see what happens. So if we play the landing and they have Chain Warder, of course, that's pretty bad for us. I think we just go for it. If they have it, they have it. Not playing the landing here would not let us cast the landing until turn 6 or 7. Alright, Chandra Spyro Helix, wow. Okay, that's uh, just as bad as a Chain Warler, I guess. Fair enough. So we want to find a land number 4 here, so we can play Expertise into Marshall in the same turn. I think I run out to Marshall here, just to be mana efficient. Get killed by a Lightning Strike. So, so far we're trading for the opponent's resources, they even got a nice 2 for 1. But if we can get 4 mana for Expertise, then we could pull ahead. And this history is also actually pretty nice as well. And I think I want to play it over the Marshal just because... It uh, will have to trade for multiple spells from the opponent if they want to kill it with spot removal spells. So we get a little bit of traction going. And yep, there's a Shock into a soul scar mage so if that is ever followed up by a chain whirler we could be in trouble get another knight token and all right time to go expertise into marshall here and hope for the best all right say go wizard's lightning on the Banalish Marshal, so that one's dead. 
So let's hope for the best here since the Chain Warlord would rack us pretty hard. Alright, instead it's another Wizard's Lightning taking out the Knight token. Alright, that's fine. Opponent does not really take advantage of the prowess on the Soulscar Mage. And there's a Gitu Lava Runner. Alright, so opponent's on the more wizard heavy red deck. So we'll take the damage. Since if we can flip this Legion's Landing, that's pretty big. Alright, let's see here. We've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine permanents in place, so casting the Pride of Conquerors in response to our history disappearing is not gonna do anything. So we'll let it go away. And then we'll move to combat. Try and flip this Legion's Landing. If your opponent tries to play another Pyro Helix, we might be able to respond with the Pride to save our tokens. Alright, we get to attack. Alright, our opponent maybe waited a second too long to cast her Pyro Helix. And I guess with the Soulscar Mage in play, it actually doesn't matter if we play the Pride here or not. But yeah, that'll work. Two tokens die. But at the very least, we get to flip the Legion's Landing, so our opponent probably should have cast the Pyro Helix before we got a chance to attack there. And our opponent is empty-handed, so don't actually mind our position here. Get to follow it up with a History into an Aspirant, which will soon have the City's Blessing and gain flying. But the main deck Chandra Spyro Helix is pretty rough against us. On the bright side, our opponent probably isn't playing Goblin Chain Warder as well. So I think I'm fine taking two from the Lava Runner since we want to keep permanence for Ascend. So I don't really want to trade. And just a land from the opponent. Alright, got a trigger. And that's going to give us a City's Blessing. And now we have the option of using Shafat Dunes or we can make a token and still use Pride. Definitely like attacking with everyone here. Put on blocks. I'll use pride. Just get in some damage and trade for the soul scar, which could be a problem if our opponent draws more burn spells. Say go. And then make a token with a Danto end of turn. Untap, get a trigger from the Hisra Banalia, and that should just about do it. Alright, another Chandra Spyro Helix, wow. Okay, fair enough. So our opponent casts three of those against the token deck. That's definitely the card you want. So our opponent's not going to be dead here, but they'll be forced to chum block. So we can pop the Shafat Dunes. And get in there. Opponent's gonna block a knight, take 7 down to 2, and we'll gain 2 up to 16. And I don't think there's a reason for us to play out the land, so I'll keep it just to represent something. And your opponent scoops it up. Alright, so in the end we got there, despite the somewhat sketchy start. Alright, how do we want to sideboard against red wizards? Um, don't mind baffling and to get rid of Soulscar Mage. Could also bring in a Gideon's Intervention if we're really afraid of a specific card like the Pyro Helix or a Chain Warlord, but I think that's a bit too narrow. Could also consider the Thopter Arrest, but it is a bit on the pricey side. So I think we just bring in the Baffling Ends, and then against this particular opponent, maybe Cartouche is a bit uh, too sketchy since they can easily kill our creature in response that we're trying to enchant. So I can see taking that out. And yeah, hope our opponent doesn't have even more token hate. And this hand looks pretty good. Turn 1 landing, turn 2 Adanto Vanguard, or Serve Exhibition. And if we draw a third land, we have some powerful cards as well. Alright, there's a Beaumont Courier, which I actually don't mind trading for, 
since we don't actually have an Ascent card in hand currently. And that seems like a fine trade for us. Alright, build to smash. Fair enough. So Bowman Courier survives. And they trample over for some damage. So here I think I like Servo Exhibition just to be able to block the Courier since I don't really want to pay a ton of life to the Vanguard. Which maybe we should have taken out in this matchup. And maybe brought in some Knight of Grace instead. But at least the Vanguard can maybe survive a removal spell while the Knight of Grace doesn't. So really want to find a third land here. And then we should be in okay shape. If we miss on a third land then we could be in trouble. Alright, a Lightning Strike to the face just to pump up the Lava Runner. And let's see if just a Lava Runner attacks or if our opponent's going to offer the trade. Alright, so just a Lava Runner attacking so we could double block it. But I think we want to hold on to our servos. And I'll take the two. Alright, nice. So now we have the option of playing Banalish Marshal, but I kind of like running out of Hystra Banalia first. Get those knights going, next turn play a second history. And then maybe drop the Banalish Marshal. And at some point we might also flip the Legion's Landing, but for now we want to play defense. Alright, Earthshaker Kenra is a nice draw here. Let's them attack with their Gitu Lava Runner and Kenra, Pastor, Servos, but I will just block the Kenra if that gets in there. So I'll block Kenra, take two. Opponent's still on two lands, and, and we drew a Sram's Expertise, so fourth land would be pretty great as well next turn. But for now I think I just play another History. And attack for two with our Knight. And I think I leave the servo back just in case. The one damage is probably not going to matter too much. We're either going to win by a lot or get burnt out. Another Earthshaker Kenra. So that one I like blocking with the servo token. If it gets in there. But it looks like they actually targeted the servo. That's smart. So now we have to block with the knight if we want to trade. So I'm not sure yet how we'll block. Alright, our opponent does not attack. I think that's great for us. So now the history's trigger. Make a knight first and then give our knights plus two plus one. Did not find the land but we will get to flip legion's landing and then go expertise into banalish marshal or we could play the marshal before attacking. But I don't think that's going to be necessary and just going expertise into marshal seems pretty unbeatable. So let's attack. Send in the knights. Flip landing. And our opponent's gonna make some trades, which is fine. And they're gonna chump one as well. That's fine. I don't think we have to play around a sweeper. Doubt our opponent's gonna have brought in something like Sweltering Suns out of this deck. So I think it's safe to go for the Expertise here, and even if it fails, to be honest, we still get to rebuild pretty quickly with a second Expertise. And they should be pretty dead here if they don't have something like a Sweeper effect, or at least a way to kill Banalish Marshal. And yep, that's gonna do it, alright. So I wanna thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this gameplay, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel and you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel as well as getting us closer to our goals where with every goal reached we will release an additional weekly series so if you want to see more content Patreon is the place to go.